everyone. In this video, I'm going to do a review of Jim. So I've got my Replit browser open here. I just went to replit.com. And over here, I'm going to create a new file. So I'm going to click on Python. So we're usually doing Python. It doesn't really matter, though, because we're going to be using Vim. Um, it just comes up with this random title here. I'm just going to put sample. And then I'm going to say create. So it's creating my file right here, and I'm just going to wait till it's ready. Now, since we're using Vim and that that is a terminal program, we're not going to worry about this Python file here. So you can just get rid of that. We don't need the console. We want the shell. So we can see we're in the directory Vim example. And if I want to open Vim and create a new file, the command that you type is Vim. This is V I M space and then your file name. So I'm going to type myfile.txt. Don't forget the file extension. Usually we're just going to do .txt um, or for text files or .py for Python files. So what I have right now is vim space myfile.txt. And remember that the terminal is uh, capital sensitive, cap sensitive. So make sure that all of your letters are lowercase here. So I'm going to press enter. And if Vim is installed, it's just going to open Vim, but sometimes it comes up with this. All you have to do is use the arrow keys to toggle one. It doesn't really matter, but I use the, Vim, the bottom one that's at Vim.out, highlight it in white, and then press Enter. So now it's going to wait to open up Vim. And here we are. So this is what Vim looks like when you just first open it. It's just kind of blank and you've got these little tildes here. Um, and then you can see the name of your file at the bottom left corner. And it says new to show that this is a new file. These numbers over here are the um, line numbers. The first one is the line number. And then the second one I believe is the character number. Um, you don't really have to worry about this too much unless you're curious about what line you're on. But you can't use your mouse. I am wiggling my mouse around, but that doesn't really do anything. But what I'm going to do is click into it to make sure I am in it. And then right now, we've opened it in command mode. So if I start typing, it's not going to type anything. But if I press I, so here I'm going to press the I key on my keyboard. Now you can see that we've gone into insert mode. Insert mode just means you can now type on your computer and um, put in characters there. So now that we're in insert mode, can start typing. I'm going to type hello world exclamation mark. Um, right now this file just has one line because I haven't pressed enter or new line at all. So I press enter, it gives me a new line. This is a new line. I'm going to press enter again and again. And then I'm just going to say it doesn't really matter what you put in this as long as you know how to type. Now if I want to save it, I'm going to press the escape key. So right now I'm pressing the escape key on my keyboard, escape. And you can see down here that that little insert uh, icon thing went away. So I'm gonna press I again to go into insert mode, just to show you. I'm gonna press I, it says insert. If I press escape, insert goes away. So now we're in command mode because we pressed escape. And to type a command to them, it's gonna pop up in this bottom left corner right here again. I'm going to type colon W if I want to save it, but not exit, colon W, then press enter. And now it says myfile.txt, and this says written right here. These are just saying four lines, 43 bytes, but written, and that means saved. So let's try adding some more text. So I'm going to press the I button again, pressing I. We're in insert mode. I can use my arrow keys to move around. You can't use your mouse. Going to add some more lines. And now to get out of insert mode and to save it, I'm going to press escape again. And then I'm going to do colon. This time, if I want to save and then exit Vim, I'm going to type WQ, enter. And then Vim closes. So if we want to see if it actually did save our file, we can type ls, which means list all of the files in this directory, press enter. 
And we've got some files that um, the replit automatically generates, like main.py, poetry.lock, all of these. You don't have to worry about those, but we do see that the file that I created, myfile.txt, is there. And if I want to open this file again, it's really simple. All we do is we type vim and then the file that you want to open. So my file.txt, and I'm going to press enter. And again, it pops up with this thing. This is just because of replit. Don't worry about it too much. I'm going to use the arrow key to move down, press enter. And here's the file that we wrote just earlier. So this is great. It lets practice going into insert mode again. I'm going to press I. I'm in insert mode. Let's see. Um, I'm going to just add some random letters here. Now let's say that I typed this and let's do escape to go back into command mode. So I typed that. And what if I want to exit Vim, but I don't want to save what I just typed? Well, I'm going to press escape, like we just did. And I'm going to type colon Q which stands for quit. Notice I didn't put the W in front because I don't want to save. You can't just do colon Q if you've already typed something because it will give you an error because it's saying you haven't saved it. But if you do colon Q exclamation mark, that tells it, no, I really mean it. I don't want to save. So now I'm going to press enter. And let's see, our file is still there. But if we open it, our changes that we made the last time we opened them, um, shouldn't be there anymore. So let's see. And there we go. You can see it's back to the original. So that is a brief overview of them. Um, I'm going to do escape colon Q. I don't have to put the exclamation mark because I didn't make any edits. So escape colon Q will let us quit. Let's press enter and quit. Then is closed. And that's just a brief overview of them. I hope this made sense. I personally use them to code in Python. But for this class, like I said, we're going to be using this text editor over here. So don't worry about it too much. Vim is very important, though, if you ever do some more programming, because a lot of people like to program in Vim. Anyway, I hope that helped.